Hello, this is Ichi Bailey, and welcome to my latest side Let's Play series. This game is long. Much longer than Final Fantasy IV. After making the DS version, Square Enix decided to make a true sequel to the game. For some reason, they have an odd fixation for releasing RPGs on cell phones, but well, that's what they decided to do here originally. It's quite an impressive amount of content for a cell phone this LP, I will be playing the PSP version of the game. When they first brought this game over to the United States, they originally ported it to the Nintendo Wii and slightly upgraded the graphics. Uh, they released the first chapter, or tale, of the game, and then each subsequent tale one month after the other until they got to the end. Now, on the Wii, I think it cost nearly $40 for the whole game, but you get a lot of content for your money. However, even with the upgraded graphics, I'll be honest, it really looks like a cell phone game. The PSP version of the game really does this game justice. Look at those FMVs! And it really may helps the game stand on its own as a worthy successor to Final Fantasy IV. Although, why do Cecil and Rosa look like they're 50 years old? They're like in their 30s, and they look like they're retired already. Well, anyway, they went all out for this version of the game. We get a full intro FMV, all the chapters included in the game, so you don't have to buy everything separately. Eh, some of the bonus content that wasn't in the Nintendo Wii version of the game. And, uh, well, that said, this LP will definitely apply to the Nintendo Wii version. Wow, look at that stash he's got there, man. Holy cow. Now, they did restore the first tale uh, to being split up like it was in the original cell phone version of the game. Uh, they also restored the challenge dungeon that wasn't in the Nintendo Wii version. They've made it far more likely to get rare treasures from the challenge dungeons, thank god. And there's a few new rare monsters and a bonus super boss. So, well, not really a super boss, but, well, you'll see. And there's no guilt cap on the chapters either, so. Oh, I like that part of the FMV. Now, because this game is so long, I've only played the game a couple times, but I'd like to think I know what I'm doing. I've got a very detailed note for clearing all the content. You know where I can find some maps of the game, let me know, but uh, well, I couldn't find anything. So, oh well. So if you can't get enough of Final Fantasy IV, then come and let's play Final Fantasy IV! The After Years! It's a direct sequel to the game, just like that other game that I will not mention. Okay, so let's get started here. Now, for the music in this game, I'm going to stick with the arrangement this time around for the After Years. We used the original for the first game, so this time let's start here. Can I even select a story yet? I don't think we can. I think we have to start a new game from scratch. Okay, yeah, there is no data because I deleted all my files there, so... Okay, we can't select a tale. Well, you have to start from the beginning in this version of the game, so let's get started then. On the Nintendo Wii version, you could start with any tale you wanted. But in this version, you gotta start from the beginning. And then, well, you'll see how the other tales are unlocked. So, yeah, I mean, you do have access to all the tales, you just have to unlock them. And it's not di directly like one you have to do to unlock the next one, and the next one, and the next one. No, no, it's not perfectly linear like that. But it's probably a good idea to play the game like that, and that's how I'm going to play the game here. I'm going to play them as they were originally released in Japan. So, let's get started here. And what's with the two moons there? I, mean, I know we used to have two moons. Now, I don't understand what happened with that. I thought that the second moon just, like, flew away and it was gone, but... In the interlude, they were saying, like, the two moons became one or something. So it's like, well, when did that happen? I don't know. You got me on that one, viewers. But anyway. Well, what happened to the rest of the fleet? Did I put in the wrong game? No. Nah, no. Nah. But this is the first chapter of the game. Theodore's chapter. Ah, there's Biggs. Adamantile. We're going to rate it for ourselves. How are you going to take an airship there, though? You need a hovercraft. Did you bring one with you? You got the hook and everything going? I like how you can see the propeller, the shadow of the propellers of the airship. 
uh, in the background there? Nice touch game. Sure, let's talk to some people. Oh wait, what, what did he say? Oh yeah, yeah, he was a real badass back in the day. Yep, world's at peace. There you go. I don't recall them mentioning that in the first game. But yeah, when this game was originally released, this is the first time you ever heard of Biggs and Wedge. We're going to be hazing you, soldier. Have fun! Oh, yeah, apparently not. I can give them money. How else do you think they get the money for us to get from them? So, uh, Rosa and Cecil apparently named their kid Theodore. Somehow he has blue hair. Blonde and white hair? You get blue. Yeah, that makes perfect sense to me. Well, you're 15 years old. You're just about ready to save the world. You gotta become a knight sooner or later. Yeah, it's gonna be Spill. Or that. Hey, you must have some pretty good white magic. Or not. Oh, yeah. What is a lark? There's your word of the day, viewers. You gotta prove your worth. Whoa! That's some pimp slap there, man. Sit down and shut up! Man, it's real strict there. He must be from Wisconsin. I'm teasing, I'm teasing. I like Wisconsin. Maybe he's German, I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's how we're supposed to get there. With Remember, they were saying back in the interlude, the moon leaving, merging, whatever, change the layout of the land. Well, now we can get there without the hovercraft. So, or it could just be for uh, convenience, for programming convenience. Sounds like a plan. Hail, screw! I, I mean, uh, uh, yes, sir. Take a look around. Now, unlike the Final Fantasy IV LP, I'm not going to go for every single monster in the game because pretty much I've already demonstrated a lot of the monsters. So, oh, really? Well, it's just a tiny little cave, though. Well, why not? How am I supposed to keep track of that? Well, why don't you tell me that? You're not going to tell me, are you? Okay, so what does that mean? Oh, okay. Well, keep that in mind. Sounds like a plan. Oh, sorry, you said what happens during a full moon. Uh, basically, in this game, every time you rest at an inn, the phase of the moon will change. Or a tent, or a cottage, or whatever. Uh, on the full moon, black, max black magic is more powerful, but your physical attacks are hindered. But it affects everyone. So, you gotta change your strategies a little bit, depending on the phase of the moon. So, mo for the most part, the battle mechanics are the same as the original Final Fantasy IV, but they add some new stuff to it, too. So, I like how they made the changes. They tweaked the system without, like, radically changing it, either. Well, thank you. How does everyone know me here already? You go to the menu, press the R button, you can see what phase of the moon it is and what it affects there. So, that's pretty nice. Okay, how's it going? Uh... I don't recall doing that in the first game. Are 
You guys just live in the middle of nowhere. Well, anyway, let's go look for some treasure around here. Oh, okay. Well, keep that in mind. Hey, 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 talk! Hey, stop move. Wait, what, what was that? Oh. Okay. Well, just in case if you didn't remember from the first game. Ah, oh, okay. Well, you got a whole cave full of adamant around here now, so... See, I don't think there's anything in the two open houses there. Oh, yeah, yeah. In the original, uh... The After Years... Well, in the original Final Fantasy IV, uh, you couldn't switch characters' turns. But in the After Years, they added the ATB gauge and everything like that, so they're explaining it as though it were new. Even though in the PSP version, they... Uh, well, they don't... Pay. Well, yeah, we already have that in the original Final Fantasy IV. Well, let's keep, take a look around for it. Ah, there we go. That was easy. Let's see what they got going on in the item shop there. Well, I'll keep that in mind. Oh, yeah, everyone's telling me about running. Okay, okay, I, I got it. How's it going? Oh, yeah, we already know all that. Oh, really? Well, at least they expanded their item inventory to not cure the only st their own statuses. Oh, by the way, let's give them the ring back. And for doing that, we get 500 gil. All right. Let's go put that money to use. Oh, yeah, I suppose so. Okay, so anyway, first things first, we want to upgrade our weapon. Because Dad couldn't afford a better weapon for me. That's better. Now, for the most part in the after years, I recommend not selling your excess equipment. And, well, you'll see why later, but you really don't need the money. The game does a really good job of giving you all the money you need without selling your excess equipment. Well, do the best I can. But, uh, let's see, I need a helmet, I think. Let me just check here. Yes. Fortunately, they give us just barely enough money to get all that stuff. And unfortunately, we have no gloves, so we're screwed! Okay, well, let's rest up at the end and go check out our first mission. I'm going to make this episode, like my other first episodes, a little longer than I other than I will the future episodes. Usually, I'll stick to like 10 to 15 minutes or so, but for this episode, I want to get at least through a battle or so. So yeah, like you see, when uh, you rest up at the end there, the phase of the moon changes to whatever the next one is. Okay, let's head on over there then. You could run into some enemies around here like cockatrices! Or is that the other guys? I know you can win the cockatrice summon from one of the enemies around there, but, well, whatever. Sounds like a plan. What do you mean I'm spoiled prince? Well, I got the bling and everything, but besides that, sounds like a plan. Man, Biggs doesn't seem like a very nice guy at all. Aw, oh, how nice. Oh, one other thing about the, uh, the after years, no more item inventory problems. You don't need to... You have virtually unlimited inventory space, so yeah, that's pretty nice. I almost said that normally, but then a split second later, I decided to uh, say it like I normally do. All right, more party members. But these two are guests, so just something to keep in mind. Sounds like a plan. Oh, let's take a look around here. Nothing over there to the right, so. Here we go. Or, wait a minute, that's something else. Okay, so...
Oh, yeah, you saw, uh, I went through that a little quickly there. Yeah, I'm just going to skim through these because it's a tutorial, but you see where it says attack and it's red? That means attacks have been weakened. Uh, you saw the black magic there that was green and the up arrow, so that means black magic is more powerful now. But you should still be able to pretty much one-shot everything here anyway with your physical attacks. But now, new to the After Years, you have bands, which are basically like the, uh, what is it, the dual attacks from Chrono Trigger there. But you don't have to learn abilities or anything like that, so I'll go, I'm just skimming through this, because I'm just going to show you how it works anyway. So, anyway, to use a band, you have to select the command that you want to use for that band. So, in this case, we want to use attack from bigs and attack from wedge. So, attack, push right, band. You want to search for a band with another character. Select bigs, attack, then hit the X button, then press square to band. And you can keep on doing that, not just with two characters. You can do that with two, three, four... Five characters even for some bands, so... No, no, I think we got that. So, yeah, that's basically how dual techs work in the game. A lot of bands you'll get as you progress through the game. Yeah, I'm just gonna go skim through the tutorial there. But yeah, a lot of bands you'll get through as the story progresses. Uh, other bands... Yeah, I'm just gonna fast forward through these. But yeah, um... But as you saw, like that band used Big's attack command and Wedge's attack command. But they, a lot of bands, they don't tell you how you're supposed to figure it out. So a lot of it, if you don't have a strategy guide, is going to be trial and error. Or you could just look it up in a guide. Or you could just watch what I'm doing here. So, but yeah, I mean, I'll explain how bands work. The nice thing that I really like about bands is that they're actually strong enough to be worth using for a change. So a lot of time, a lot of games that use like dual techs or bands or whatever, they don't make it more powerful than the two individual attacks combined, which is like, okay, then why bother? Why would I bother doing that? So, in the after years, they change that, so they're actually worthwhile. So. What do you mean I'm all on my own? Oh, yeah, that would help. Uh, Theodore does have Cure. I think he does. I know he has white magic. And he'll learn other white magic as the game progresses. So you're just going to leave it alone? Wow, that's a pretty strict regimen Dad has there now. Nuts. Let me see. Uh, yeah, I've got Cure, but I don't want to use that quite yet. Well, I'll do the best I can. Now I'm all alone. Crap. I don't think I'm going to be able to kill that Sword Rat in one hit with the full moon out. Do I have any other options? I don't think I do. Nope, I'm screwed. He's going to counterattack. Ow. And I'll heal up when I lose about half my max HP. And we learned Libra, but, uh, well, nothing I care about. Most of these enemies, they're pretty much the same as they were in Final Fantasy IV. They, there are some changes, but for the most part, they keep them the same. So if you're familiar with Final Fantasy IV, you don't have to relearn everything all over again. So that's pretty nice. I actually like that myself. But can Theodore survive his first mission? Find out next time on Let's Play Final Fantasy IV The After Years. This is H.G. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day.